Some weeks in iRacing it's so chaotic all you can do is try to keep your nose clean, run as consistently as you can and pray to the iRacing gods that you don't get taken out. Hi everyone, Ben here and I want to start today's video with a big thanks to everybody who signed up as a channel member over the last couple of weeks. In particular, a big shout out to Daniel Malka, Sam Pick and Josh Marshall. Now what we're watching at the moment up on screen is highlights from my first race of the week in the Formula 3 at Hockenheim and you'll see at the hairpin on lap 1 we get tagged by a driver who just runs in a little bit deep into the corner and unfortunately for me I had to rejoin at the very back of the field. We'll see this now from on board of the driver coming into the corner he just gets in a little bit hot and it is a small bit of contact but unfortunately for me it's decisive. I did get an apology at the end of the race from that driver. Now we were able to make a bit of a recovery, this is with just two laps to go riding on board and I'm pressing for a top 8 finish. Unfortunately for me again we're coming into the stadium section, the driver up ahead gets it wrong and I've got absolutely nowhere to go, no time to react and unfortunately I ended up finishing the race in pit lane. I got the meatball flag, I didn't get the chance to get back out on track and here is where we finished in the race. So a disappointing first race of the week, can I improve next time out? Here we go then, the main event, we're on the grid at Hockenheim for an 18 lap race in the Formula 3. It's a bigger grid, it's a higher split grid and we've qualified in P11, so in the midfield. It's going to be very tight and congested heading through the first lap, again the focus is going to be on survival, banking that experience from race 1 and hopefully this time getting through unscathed. We're waiting then for the lights, four red lights on and they're gonna go green and we are underway and one drive up ahead surely jump the start. Other drivers struggling to get away at all. We're right pressed up towards the grass but we manage to squeeze past the car up ahead. I'm gonna take a deliberately wide line through T1, take the 1x for the off track just to make sure that I didn't get tagged on my inside and I do have a driver on my inside here. In fact I'm gonna run in just slightly deep into the right hander there that's going to allow Mohamed Bulage around the inside and that is going to drop me back one position I've no idea where we're running in the field at the moment because there were so many uneven starts up ahead of me I do know that Esdorf who started the race in sixth place is definitely going to have a drive-through penalty for that false start Right then, we're heading into the hairpin for the first time and there's one drive off and we ran in so deep. Wow, we did exactly the same as that driver from race one who tagged my rear tyre. Unbelievably, I just managed to get it slowed down and not take the driver out up ahead and we got through unscathed but I'll, that was just luck. That was the iRacing god smiling at me for a change this time around. I could easily have repeated the mistake that we saw another driver make in the opening race. As it stands, we get through cleanly and we're heading into the stadium section for the first time. We've got just a little bit of a gap behind, but up ahead, we're chasing Balagay and he is just 0.6 seconds up the road. So, the race starts from here essentially. We've managed to get through lap one pretty tidy. We're into the top 10, I think. Yeah, we're up into eighth position here. We can build a decent race from this point. But let's just take a look back at who that was off track in the hairpin. And it's actually Ito Shun, the leader, gets tagged around by the P2 driver. That's a little bit naughty, really, heading into the hairpin. Very, very unlucky for the pole sitter. And actually, he would soon retire from the race. We rejoin then on lap two and the field is still very tightly bunched together here so I've got to have my eyes peeled up ahead as drivers are going to go side by side but also in my rear view mirror too because the slipstream at Hockenheim is no joke and you can see the driver behind Perat getting bigger and bigger in my rear view mirror. He's got to the inside, he's got the overlap on me here, I'm going to try and hold it around the outside but to be fair he's clean past me into the braking zone. I try and get down the inside on corner exit but he's just carried more speed than I have, more confidence than I had at that point on cold tyres, cold brakes through the hairpin and that is one position that we've lost and I shape to the inside just trying to put him off into the left hander here but no joy. Here's it on replay then you can see actually he's well past me there into the corner. I wasn't going to fight it too hard at this stage of the race. I don't really want to come together with any driver if I can avoid it but especially in the early running here. We rejoin the live action then on lap 4 and I'm following Louis Rennes up ahead in 7th. We're in 8th position. We gained a place back 
after Esdorf had to come in to serve his drive through penalty for that jump start. But we've got Alexander Lorenz behind, putting on all kinds of pressure too. That said, there really is not much separating myself from 5th place Bulagay at the moment and indeed Boivin up in 4th is not that far up the road either. It's a little bit follow my leader at the moment with cars around 0.6 to 0.7 seconds uh, apart from one another. The slipstream here is keeping everybody in touch with everybody else but we've made up 3 spots from the opening lap and we've just set our PB for the race so far but look at my rear view mirror I take a late decision to cover off the inside from Alexander Lawrence there and actually that might have been a bit of a mistake because it puts me offline coming through the next corner and onto the very long back straight I've compromised myself and that's going to give Lawrence a very good opportunity to get past me here he's on the racing line I've covered off the inside line here we're side by side heading into the braking zone who's going to be brave on the brakes it looks like it might be him I take a very tight line to not understeer out into him we're side by side on exit but he gets the better exit from the corner he's got the momentum we're very very close behind through the right hand kink here again I'm going to try and shift to the inside just to put him off but it looks like he has the place done and we're going to shuffle back into ninth position here we are on the replay then you can see he's ahead of me into the braking zone I try to capitalize on having the inside line he keeps it very neat and tidy on the exit and takes the position we rejoin then later on lap 5 and I've immediately come under pressure from another Alexander this time Alexander Henry in my rear view he's trying to go around the outside of the left hander there almost impossible to make a pass in fact it was a tiny bit of contact we get a 0x but it looks like I'm under immediate pressure once again to hold on to ninth place here I've got to try and settle down keep my composure because I'm coming under attack here lap after lap after lap and I don't want to lose touch with the guys up ahead I'm slightly tentative through T1 Henry gets a much better run through the corner look at him closing in on me here in fact he's going to make a move down in the right hander this time I'm not going to defend it I'm actually going to prioritize getting the slipstream on him down the back straight so we've conceded the position but with a view to getting it straight back into the hairpin let's see if the plan works trying to learn from what happened on the lap prior here we go then we've peeled to the inside I'm gonna have the inside line once again I do have the momentum of the slipstream on Henry we're into the braking zone but once again he's slightly later on the brakes I've got to keep it nice and tight to the inside we're gonna be side by side oh there's a little bit of contact as he got a little bit of oversteer on corner exit and unfortunately that means I couldn't sustain my momentum on corner exit here it is then on replay you can see Henry making the initial pass into T2 and then we cut to the hairpin I've managed to get down his inside but unfortunately for me I couldn't hold it through the exit of the corner he gets a little bit of oversteer there's a tiny bit of contact and unfortunately I couldn't hold that move on corner exit and it wouldn't be long before I lost another position this time to Fujimoto Romaru who comes down my inside into the hairpin and once again we've been caught out we've lost so many positions having had a very decent start we rejoin the live action on lap 7 then and I am still keeping in touch with these guys so it suggests to me that my underlying pace is actually pretty strong but I'm losing out either on racecraft or I'm just not pushing hard enough into a couple of crucial corners. We're coming through then onto the start finish straight. I haven't given up hope here of still getting a decent result out of this race. We're not yet at the half race distance point and we're coming through T1 then. And look at that, a driver off to the left hand side. That's Perat. He's made a big mistake into T1 and we've gained one of those positions back. Here it is on replay. He just catches a tyre on the grass verge and that is enough at high speed to unsettle the car we rejoin on lap 10 then and we're still in 10th position and we're still in touch with the drivers up ahead so I'm hoping that just by being a little bit kinder to my tires you can see the driver up ahead in particular is moving around a lot in the braking zones I'm hoping that this race in the second half will come back towards me because I feel like the car is feeling pretty good at this point of the race look up ahead another yellow flag and another driver has dropped it through that left hander there and that will be another position gained this time it's Arno Salen chasing Bryce Boyven for position and he just locks up and immediately the car is round so that's another position back up into the top 10 
we rejoin the live action once again then and although the gaps are just starting to slightly open up with the drivers up ahead we're going to get another position again this time it's Lawrence who must have a slowdown penalty of some kind but I couldn't see where from on the replay he slows down to the right hand side of the track he thinks about just squeezing me out there but I'm able to power on past and the next few laps were all about trying to hold that position from Lawrence behind and you can see there putting pressure on me into the hairpin I'm able to resist that time around but we were running within half a second of one another for a good number of laps in the middle part of this race you can see here he is in close attention through the stadium section from his on board and I'm still managing to keep up with Ramaru up ahead as well so all to play for here as we head to start another lap of racing however it wouldn't last too long for Lawrence as he's looking down my inside and then he makes exactly the same mistake as Perat did laps earlier, gets up onto the grass and spins out a T1. So we're up into 8th position, there's only a couple of laps left of this race and I'm pretty well settled for this as my finishing position, gaining a few spots of qualifying and in a relatively high strength of field this would be a very good result but actually the action wasn't over yet. With less than two laps left on the race, we're going to come into the hairpin once again and the yellow flags are out and that is Bryce Boyven who's managed to make a mistake into the hairpin. That's going to get me up into seventh position. Here it is on replay and once again it's a lockup. So we might have lost a few positions from not being aggressive enough into some of these corners through the race and losing positions on track. But what I've found is by the end of the race, actually my strategy seems to have paid off quite nicely because I'm able to control the car consistently lap after lap after lap. Other drivers have made crucial mistakes and that is going to see me come home, take the checkered flag in P7 for a really strong result really really pleased with that a good bump to my safety rating and a good bump to my i rating i'm still hovering just shy of 2k here's the full classified results then you can see we only finished 15 seconds off the lead in the end so some pretty strong underlying pace here very very happy to come home in the top 10. thanks everybody for watching i really appreciate the sport and if you'd like to get more involved in the channel click the video on screen and find out how